So let's now move on to the more juicy part of the video, which is to talk about the side effects of these medications. So we'll begin with the most famous and most easily identified side effect of them, which is sedation. So they make you extremely tired, or at least some of them do. So the older antihistamines are the ones that are really bad for this, the ones that are known as the first generation antihistamines. And I've written the list of examples that I told you about earlier. So chlorphenamine, which is pyroton, diphenhydramine, which is Benadryl, promethazine, which is phenergan, hydroxyzine, which is atorax, and cyproheptadine, which is periactin. Uh, these are all first generation antihistamines. They're extremely effective anti-itch tablets. The problem is they all cross the blood-brain barrier, go to the brain, and block histamine receptors in the brain. And the effect of that is that they cause uh, massive sedation. They make you extremely tired. Um, these three up here, loratadine, cetirizine, and fexofenadine, these are known as second generation antihistamines. And they are much less good at crossing the blood-brain barrier, so they're much less active in the brain, and that's the reason that they're much less sedating drugs. So generally, for antihistamines, this is the only major acute side effect that most people will recognize when they take the medicine. So, for example, if someone takes Pyroton, uh, they will notice that the itchiness goes down, but the other effect that they'll notice is that they start to feel tired, usually. If they take Loratadine, however, the gentlest of the second generation antihistamines, they might just get the positive effects and no side effects because, as I say, its sedating effect is much less because its ability to cross the blood-brain barrier is much less. So they'll notice that their itchiness goes away, but they might not feel tired at all. And usually, as I say, this is the only side effect of antihistamines that most people experience acutely and recognize that is, you know, prominent enough for them to actually recognize. So apart from the sedating effect, antihistamines are extremely well-tolerated medicines in the acute setting. However, let's now talk about what happens if you take these medicines on a daily basis for long periods of time, so we're talking months, maybe even years. What are the possible side effects of taking them chronically? So here we go. So the major reason against taking antihistamines long-term on a daily basis is that they are now generally acknowledged to cause weight gain. So this is still not completely settled. It is not completely proven yet, but it is something that many clinicians have been suspicious of for a very long time. And I think most clinicians now agree that this is probably true. And it is at the point now that it's been included in the BNF as a side effect under all of the antihistamines that they can cause weight gain. So the suspicions of this have been there for decades. However, the major study that really catapulted belief in this forward was a study that was done, I think, about a decade ago by Harvard University. Um, and it took a large sample of people, a random sample from the public, and looked at the ones who take antihistamines and the ones who don't look in, uh, sorry, don't take antihistamines. And it found that as a group, the people who are on the antihistamines are fatter, they weigh more, their BMIs are higher than the group of people who don't take antihistamines. And now there is one of two explanations for that. Either you can conclude that the antihistamines are causing weight gain, or you can conclude the other way around, that weight gain causes the antihistamines. So weight gain causes you to be at higher risk of getting these conditions that necessitate the use of antihistamines. And there are some people who still uh, strongly stand by the second of those explanations, that um, the reason this association exists is you're more likely to have eczema or hay fever if you're overweight, and that's why uh, they're on the antihistamines. Um, however, opinion is gradually shifting towards the former, that it is that the antihistamines do cause weight gain. And I believe in the former. I stand by that antihistamines do cause you to gain weight. And that is the reason you do not really want to be taking these long term. Unfortunately, sometimes people can't stop taking them. Their conditions will get out of control uh, if they stop taking them. Um, in which case, you just want to try and be on as low a dose as possible that can make your life bearable. So how do antihistamines cause weight gain? Well, again, this is still speculation. None of this is proven. Um, but it is believed that they 
increase appetite and therefore the individuals end up eating more and that's how they end up gaining weight. This is supported by a huge amount of anecdotal evidence. A huge number of people say that when they take uh, these medicines, especially when they take the first generation antihistamines, the old ones, uh, that they feel a lot hungrier when they're taking them uh, and end up eating a lot more and that dieting is much, much more difficult. So if you try and uh, forcibly restrict how much you're eating, you end up just overcome with hunger and hunger pains and not being able to function properly because you're not able to concentrate because you're so obsessed with wanting to eat something. So overall it is becoming more and more accepted and I am afraid a believer in this theory that antihistamines do uh, stimulate appetite and in a lot of people they lead to weight gain and th therefore you really want to be trying to avoid prescribing these medicines long term for people. You need to be trying to find other ways of treating their medical condition. And I would say to anyone who is overweight and really struggles to lose weight and is taking a daily antihistamine and has maybe been taking a daily antihistamine for years, potentially do look at that medicine in a different light because it may be responsible for this uh, and consider whether there's any other way of controlling your symptoms without that medicine. Because you may find that once you're off it, that you're able to lose weight in a way that you've not been able to for years, potentially. So we'll end it there. Thank you for watching.